There we go, finally got to the credits. We crashed again, how delightful, how wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed, I'll, I'll say it, I really enjoyed Fallout 3 up until Project Purity, uh, up until when we finally got to, when we finished with Project Purity. Um, I've commented on it quite a few times, but it just felt a little kind of tacked on. Like, I don't mind epilogues. I really like Scouring the Shire, and I think it should have been in the films. Although I do realise you've got to cut things out when, when you're dealing with Lord of the Ring, with a story the size of Lord of the Rings, you have to cut things out. But that kind of stuck with the kind of plot, the kind of themes of almost like anyone can be a hero. Um, and everyone has it within themselves to be a hero. Um, and also the price of doing good. Um, and that you can deal with a big evil but still have a little evil at home. Those kinds of things. And that Scaring a Shy kind of held on to the, that theme, those themes and those ideas. And kind of the idea of Fallout 3, the theme was almost sacrifice. So, um, your father sacrifices Project Purity so that you can grow up as an ordinary child. In, a, in the vault, and you can have a decent life. He then sacrifices sacrifices his life in the vault because now you're ready and he can go back to Project Purity. He sacrifices his life uh, to protect it from the Enclave. Um, and then ultimately, and I think particularly it works in, in with the choice I made, rather than sending some, rather than saying sending in Sarah, I went in myself. I sacrificed myself so that everyone else could have... So Project Purity would work. And that's kind of this flow, this kind of constant theme of sacrifice. <coughs> but... Then you get to the kind of the Broken Seal epilogue DLC, and that just doesn't flow anymore. There's no... There's no element of... There was, wasn't really any element of sacrifice. Um... There was, I mean, what what were the what were the main bits? Is we went out. Okay, Liberty Prime blew up and told everyone to leave. But as a robot, that's kind of different. Um, he didn't actively do anything to sacrifice himself. Like he would have been hit anyway, even if he tried to leave without warning people. Then you then then it was going into Olney and. There wasn't really an aspect of sacrifice there. And then finally, um, Adam's Air Force Base, again, there wasn't really a sense of sacrifice in doing that. Other than time. My time. Your time. Everyone's time. So I just kind of... Um, I just... Yeah, it just... Th th this... A bit of DLC, that, that bit of DLC I don't think really worked. Um, I did like Operation Anchorage because it, it filled in a little bit more of here. An ex here's an example of what could have happened with um, the Chinese invasion. Um, uh, because I, obviously that was an, a, sim a simulation of afterwards how what would it be like to free Anchorage. So. I like that DLC. I liked Fallout 3 in general. It, I think it didn't feel overly similar to Oblivion from what I remember of it. It did feel a bit like Skyrim. But I think that's partly as much as anything because of the lockpicking mechanism. Because I think that's the same in, in Skyrim, if memory serves. Um, so there are, a few th <laughs> there are a few things. It does feel like a Bethesda game. It, it does feel like Oblivion and, and Skyrim, um, but while I was playing it, it was kind of, oh, I'm, yeah, I, it, which may be because of the guns, um, to be fair. Like, it is a, it does have some different elements to it in that. Um, I, I really appreciated that there were lot, lots of situations and quests where you could... Um, talk out of it, or there was a science solution, and you didn't always have to fight. Um, whereas 
And I think that's another problem with Broken Steel is the first mission is fighting through to um, is fighting through to get the data. The second one is fighting Death Claws to gain access to the um, to the ruins in um, Olney. And then the third one is just fighting through the Air Force Base. And yes, there were a few kind of science checks you could have done. But in general, it was combat, 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 combat. Um, which I think is really sad because you're taking away one of the one of the kind of interesting things about Fallout, which is there are sometimes other solutions. Okay, Frank Corrigan notwithstanding. But um yeah, there are there are there are other solutions. In Fallout One, you can get through the master using science and from and picking up information earlier on in the game. Um I think Fallout Two admittedly has a similar falls into a similar thing towards the end. Where actually, yeah, this has to, you have to fight through. Colonel Autumn, you can just let him leave and basically go. We've wiped out almost your entire force. Is there any point left? Um, I think it would have been more interesting. I think it would have been interesting thinking about it if we'd ha if the two, if the the two enclave factions had split and maybe there was something there, um, or if there was something to do with. Um, maybe the outcasts coming back, coming to, back in, well, maybe not back into the Brotherhood, but kind of attached to it, um, to deal with this big threat coming up. But the outcasts didn't really go anywhere um, and weren't really relevant to the story. And I get that you've got this big world that you want to fill and do loads of things with, but there is also that kind of aspect of... Um, what, what, what is this? What is the story here, and how does it fit into the wider story? And you've got the outcasts, and there didn't really seem to be much of much interaction with any other part of the story. Yeah, they're out and about, and they're exploring, and they're looking for technology, but they don't actually look for technology. They're not actually going around and picking up technology that other people drop, or particularly targeting. Um, robots to get their technology. They're just doing their own thing. Um, they're just wandering around and clearing out things that attack them. And that's kind of it. And so, mm, I'm just complaining about things now. <laughs> Which is, an, I think it's annoying because I did really like um, I did really like the base game. Um, but it's just... I think this DLC is kind of sad. This final DLC has actually soured things a little bit for me. I don't mind the idea of a main character dying. Um, as long as it serves the plot. Um, and the themes of the story. And I think it did at the end of it. At the end of the main game. And this epilogue kind of takes that away. Um... And it's a bit weird, because like, you're a member of the, the Pride, and that was the final thing, is you're going into um, Project Purity and taking um, taking it back from the Enclave. And then it's like, oh, well, you're you, we're kick basically kind of, we're kicking you out. You, you're, you're nothing to do with the Brotherhood anymore. And I don't think that fits. It feels a little bit like we've got to have a particular setup. And, and that's... Uh, yeah. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, it'd be really nice to see a see kind of. I think. Uh, I think if you wanted to do an epilogue to this game, I don't think it should be the same character. I think you come in as maybe as as an initiate as someone but then it's a separate game and separate story and separate characters so maybe they didn't want to do that um and may, maybe it was people who wanted to keep going exploring the um uh, the world um 
but the problem is you then damage the story and this is this becomes the kind of the disconnect between the story and the gameplay and how do you balance those questions of people who prefer the who are really really into the gameplay and so want certain aspects and then you got people like me who really like the story and really want to really want to explore the story not necessarily the world in the same way and so yeah i think that i think i think broken steel dlc is actually isn't great for me because it doesn't add to the story i think it detracts um, and I am just complaining about Broken Steel. That's what this, these credits have come over to. But I just want to keep going. I, I, I want to keep talking over the credits. And I probably shouldn't. Because I've run out of things to say. Fallout 3. Good game. Broken Steel. Eh. Okay. No. No, Broken Steel. I would say thumbs down on Broken Steel. It's Operation Anchorage is eh. I think, yeah. I think... I don't know if I should have gone there thinking about it. Because it was really useful. But... I was still using the equipment towards the end. The only reason I stopped using the armor was because I, I joined the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood of Steel had taken me on and then were like, oh, you're not part of our group anymore. That was, that was nice. <laughs> um, I don't, yeah, so I don't think there's anything else to say. So once again, I'm going to leave, as always, I will leave the credits uh, to keep sliding along so that you can um, have a look and show respect to all the people who have worked really hard for this game so uh, the next game will uh, well will be up to patreon backers so we'll see what they want um, and we'll find out next time thanks for watching everyone thanks for watching <laughs>